So, hello everyone. Hello, my name is Niklas. Um, I'm a software engineer working at part-time at Fantastic, but I'm also having my own startup called ChargePrice. If you are driving an electric car, you maybe want to check out uh, our app. But uh, today I want to talk about another side project that I was working on two years ago. Um, it was about uh, how I created a book out of my WordPress blog. And uh, also today is the first time that I'm talking at a conference. So thank you for the organizers for choosing my session. And I usually, um, when I'm attending at the conference, I like those talks that are not super much into one technology, like more like high level where I can get some inspiration. And that's why um, this will also not be super detailed, but you will still see some HTML, CSS and such stuff. Um, to start with, is there anybody here that uh, is having their own blog or so, writing about things, one, two? Okay, cool. Yeah, um, and to start with, um, I want to tell you how it, it began with me. Um, around 10 or actually already 13 years ago, I started my own blog in, in high school called Die rot weiß rote Brille. We wrote about all kinds of nerdy things in, the, in, the, in high school. Um, but in the recent years, we switched over, or I actually, because my friends are not writing too much anymore. Um, I switched over to writing about like outdoor activities, about hiking, because my friends and I, I'm, we, were, we are hiking towards the sea like every year, like four days, 75 kilometers, and then it's always nice to, to write about this and add the pictures. And then I'm usually uh, sending a postcard to my grandma. And then I'm meeting her again, telling her about my adventures. And then she, then I tell her, yeah, I'm also having this blog online and you can find all other information there. But then she's like, can I also read this without internet? And then I said, mm, it's going to be hard. <laughs> the first idea was then, yeah, why not print it out? But on the other end, it's a bit boring. Just print out the website it would work, but on the other hand, um, there is also this bucket list, this famous bucket list, and one of these items for me is creating a book. And then I thought, yeah, well, I have the content already, um, so I could just quite easily create a book out of this. And this is how it started. And as a developer, I'm starting with the requirements. I mean, here the main requirement was quite clear. I want to have a book. And for the non-functional requirements about this whole project, um, I defined three things. I wanted to have it done rather quick and nerdy, so I didn't want to spend months on this. But I also didn't just want to create a, a like a Word document and write everything that's too little nerdy. Um, then it should be kind of affordable. I could have also gone to an agency and said, please, there is my blog, create a book out of it. But this would have been quite expensive. Um, and not so much fun. Uh, and in the end, I still wanted to let it look somewhat professional. So like I could, as I said before, just print it out. But yeah, this would not look so nice. So um, this is uh, how I started. And then I thought, like, how hard could it be to create to create a book? As I said before, I could have started with, with Word. Um, but if you start with Word, you would need to copy paste everything. I would go to need to go to my blog and choose the 16 posts out of my 300 that I wanted to have in my book, then copy paste everything. And this is kind of annoying because in Word formatting is um, rather manual. So you always need to check every paragraph. And yeah, in the end, it's also not too nerdy enough. Um, so this was not an option. On the other hand, I could have gone for like scientific things like LaTeX, but if I remember back to my university days, it took like a week to set this up. So I'm more like a web developer and I thought, yeah, I could maybe use other tools that I'm using regularly at work. So um, the next thing that I did is then do what every normal developer does is when they have a problem, we just Google it. And there we found some quite, uh, I, I found some nice tools where you could just insert your WordPress blog URL and it automatically creates your book. Super cool. 
but also super basic. So my blogs, my blog posts are ra rather long, like 3,000 words sometimes. And here I just took the first paragraph and the first picture. And yeah, that's not really working well then. I wanted to have all the content there. And there are other tools where I need to install some something else, then register a third-party account and configure other random things, and then you pay a lot of money. Here it says $41 for a book with 100 pages, which is already quite expensive. So um, I continued with this. Like I didn't use any of these tools. I continued researching, and the result was this Kalin PDF Creation Station, which is a super nice WordPress plugin, which I found. It's free. Um, you can just install it. And although the name says PDF Creation, you can also um, download the content as HTML because with a PDF, you already have the final result. It's hard to edit it afterwards if there is something that's not looking well. Um, but with HTML, I could just continue... Uh, with my normal web development tools and um, modify and format everything there. And this plugin is also super dynamic, so you could also decide which uh, metadata you want to, um, to export. And then you just press download and have um, a first draft ready. So the result is then an HTML file and then a folder with all your pictures, which is pretty handy because you can just open this in a web browser and then open it in the printing dialog and you have basically a very basic version of a book. And um, you see here it's 117 pages. Um, it's something, but it's not perfect. So let's continue with formatting the, the content a bit. So the first thing that I did is um, changing the format to A5 because I wanted to have this. Then I changed the margin of... Um, um, of, of the layout so that if I glue two pages together that uh, no content is lost. Um, the next thing is then going into CSS. So the interesting part um, to first of all change the line height, uh, the font family to make it, uh, make it easier to read. Uh, I justified the text so that it uh, takes all the space. Um, then I figured out some nice uh, CSS that's uh, really just for, for printing, like this page break after or page break before, where you can say, hey, this H1 content uh, headline, I want to start it um, on a new page always. So um, with that, every new post starts on a new page, which is um, very good for, for reading it um, and formatting the whole content. And I could say that after this, after every um, H1 header, there is no um, no new page. As the next thing, um, I started to uh, I, I, uh, I disabled the headers and footers because they are not customizable. And if you remember back in the days when you printed websites, maybe you saw that there is this uh, ugly file name header, um, and you cannot get rid of this. So, um, but I have a solution for 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 example page numbers then later. Um, also, I made the images in 100% width so that it takes all the space. And the last thing um, was that this is some manual work. The other things were quite um, just configuration, and it uh, was applied to the whole to the whole book already. But then, um, if you have links in your posts, then you should think about removing them because if you read a book, then you cannot click on the links and you maybe should rewrite something that it's, that the reader doesn't lose any context because there is no link that they can follow. Yeah. Um, the next manual thing, or the, the other manual thing that needs to be done was adjusting the images. Because if you see this, um, you see a picture, then a small paragraph, and then lots of white space. And then maybe on the next page you have another picture and another white space. And this is not really the best use of paper if you print it, also it looks a bit ugly. And therefore, um, I manually reformatted the images. Uh, maybe in LaTeX this works automatically, but um, for HTML, unfortunately not. So I need to manually adjust this, but in the end it looks nice. The pictures might be a bit smaller, but um, it works out. 
yeah, with that we already have the content of the of the blog um, more or less ready. So the next thing that we also need for a book is of course a table of contents. And um, after you have the content ready, you basically know uh, on which pages um, everything start, like every post starts. So you can just manually create an HTML table, add the title and the uh, the, the page numbers there. Um, so quite straightforward. And the next thing um, is the same for for the title page. So the title page is when you open the book. It's the first page um, where you see the title and the name and the, um, and maybe the date when you published it. And then you can uh, write some handwritten note for your grandma, for example, as a Christmas present or so. Yeah. Um, and now we come already to the page numbers. As I said before, um, that's not so easily doable via CSS or HTML. So I downloaded the, um, the main content, as you see, saw before, just via the printing dialog as a PDF. And then I found this nice tool. I love PDF.com. You can do many things with this. But one thing that you can do is adding page numbers quite dynamically. You can decide where, when you want to start. For example, on the first three pages, there should be no page number. Then you start with page four, you can um, decide where to put it, um, but you can also decide uh, the, like the font family and so on. So this is most pretty handy. And the, now we had the content fully ready, like everything inside the book was ready. The only thing that was left was um, the cover and the back page. And you don't need to be a super creative designer to do this. You can just uh, go to other books and see how they did it. And I took some inspiration from Story1 here. If you don't know Story1, it's a really nice uh, platform where you can also publish um, stories, but this didn't work for me because they are quite short. And you can also publish books there, but the books also just have those short stories and it's quite limited, but still um, the title pages of those books um, they look nice to me, so I just went to Google Slides and basically copied everything <laughs> for me. Um, I could just change the page setup to, to A5 format, for example, and create the front and the back page, or the cover and the back page, and export it as PDF. So this was quite simple and efficient, and Google Slides or any uh, like PowerPoint-ish tool works quite well for this. Yeah, and the last part that you need for a book is printing. And here comes the affordable part uh, in here. Um, I googled around where to print this book. Like There are probably 10 services on the internet, but then I figured out the solution was really close. I am from Graz, so I figured out that the ÖH Service Center, you can print your diploma thesis there. Um, but you can also print novel books there. Um, for me, uh, it was a soft cover book. In the end, um, I wanted 16 copies because I didn't only wanted to gift it to my grandma, but also to my friends. Um, in the end, I paid 10 euros per copy. This was, of course, before inflation times um, with 160 pages and 120 of them were color pages. So this was quite cheap for that many color pages. Um, and there was even a test printing option because at the beginning I wasn't really sure like how how big should the font be, how how well does it read then on, on paper. So I could just go there, they printed me one, one demo version and then that's it. So um, I just ordered it and three days later everything was ready. So I could just pick it up and um, yeah, the book was done. And when you think about alternatives that I found on the internet, so we had 10 euros now. Um, and I found, for example, ePubli.com, which was 23 euros per copy. So way more expensive and not as flexible as the EUH service center. And they even had open during the lockdown. So quite nice. <laughs> um, another option would be the bookmundo.de, which was 18 euros per copy. So if you're not living nearby Graz, then you can go there. Or maybe they have hardcover options, but I, 
I didn't really need a hardcover option. Um, so yeah, um, that was it. And with that, um, the mission was accomplished. I created this um, A5 version of my book. It's really nice. Um, I also have it here. I forgot to put it out. So that's it. Um, I was really happy with this. So it, it's quite nice. Um, font size looks good. If you want, you can browse it a bit. But this is really just um, using the tools that I, I said before, just HTML, CSS, and the Google Chrome printing dialog. So um, to sum it up, the whole project was around 20 to 30 hours of work for this very first book, because this included lots of research on the tooling and how to do it. But for the next book, it would, of course, be significantly less effort. So, Because if you have the content already written and you know how to create it, how to create a book out of it, it would have been probably five hours of work for the next book then. Um, then I found out, yeah, you get quite far with free and open source tools and HTML and CSS. You don't need Word, you don't need LaTeX, of course. There are probably hundreds of, of options on how to create a book, but this is how I did it and how it worked really well for me. And the most important thing is that this whole project of creating a book was lots of fun. So, of course, this is not like a super perfect book that you find in, an, for example, on Amazon or Thalia or so, but it does its job. And most importantly, my grandma can read it. And she was really happy. I gave it to her as a Christmas gift and she read it twice within the first month. So that was, was very important. Um, and with that, I'm, I'm already done. And I want to thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions or if you want to browse the book a bit uh, or if you also want to create a book, um, then feel free to ask me or we can talk later as well. Um, yeah, so thank you for your attention. Yes. Yeah, 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 that's, uh, yeah, the question is um, if I considered using Markdown also. Um, yes, actually, it would have been a quite nice idea. I would need to translate the HTML uh, WordPress blog to Markdown first, but then, yeah, it would be totally an option. That's actually a good idea. I, I actually didn't think about this. Yes, the behind. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it was more like, not a question, but a remark that there is a, a Python-based tool called Sphinx, uh, where you can also create static content and so. Yeah, thank you. Yes? Um, the question is if I um, change if I change the styles of my blogs because I might consider it for books in the future. Um, yes, mainly about the links that I'm not adding too many links anymore and that I try to make them basically independent from other websites so that you can just uh, print it out easier. But other than that, there was nothing really else. Maybe not adding any video content or so. Or uh, yeah. But that's it. Yes? You satisfied with the tool chain and you're satisfied that you're working with WordPress as uh, your staff. So the point of your tools and, and writing blogs with WordPress is, is your way you go in the future. Uh, the question is if I still would stick to WordPress, if uh, I hear it correctly. 
Um, yes, but it's mainly because it's already set up. <laughs> because, I mean... Yes, of course. But just... No, I'm like I'm not blogging that often. I'm like writing posts probably five times per year and I just like to have it set up there. I like to focus on the writing part and not so much uh, on the setup. I created my own WordPress theme. Like you could go to the blog and see. Um, so it works <laughs> and it does its job and therefore I, I like to stick to it for now. But of course, if I would now start Greenfield with a new blog, then I might do some research on how to do it because right now it's still running on our own V server and not really in the cloud, which is a bit of a hassle, but yeah, it still works. Good, then thank you. <laughs>